Hi, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again to step in the ring with the greatest tag team in podcast history. Just Freaking Wrestling, the JFW Podcast, hosted by Travis D. I'm Dizzle J. And, uh, you know, we're obviously we're going to do a recap of the uh, NXT TakeOver in Philadelphia. Oh, man. We're going to talk about the um, incredible Royal Rumble uh, pay-per-view. Oh, man. But, uh, I mean, like, to kind of start off, I mean, like, there, there's there been other things um, in the wrestling business that... Um, Outside of these pay-per-views, like, a lot of things have also happened. Like, and I, I know I said this last week, you know, a lot of things are happening, and, you know, this week. But the month of January ended, you know, like, on a high note, you know. they announced, Oh, man, definitely. They announced a new uh, a new induction or a tag team into the Hall of Fame. The Dudley Boys. Which, uh, we, I mean, we heard a lot that that was going to happen. Like, oh, yeah, so, like, I mean, it totally deserved, too, at the same time. You're yeah. talking, these guys went everywhere and were champions mm-hmm. everywhere. I don't think there was an organization that they were in that I know of that they weren't tag team champions and or heavyweight champion, TV champion, or any yeah. other that, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, they're uh, obviously tag teams and the tag team champion ECW. Right. Uh, the WWE. Uh, TNA, I, I think it was New Japan. I know they held one overseas uh, during TNA. Uh, but uh, IGWP. Okay. Um, what was it? I don't know what that stands I, for. I have no idea what it stands but, for. No, but you are correct on that. Uh, tag team tournaments, but they also were WCW Tag Team Champions, you know, during the WF, you know, uh, buyout. Yeah. yeah. So, but they never, I mean, they never officially wrestled for WCW, but they did wrestle under the WCW uh, banner, if you will, when WF right. owned them. Uh, real quick, I actually want your opinion on this. And I was kind of thinking about this um, when I saw the Dudley announcement. What's your thought on um, announcements of uh, Diddy and Ducties happening on other like organizations and other places other than Diddy? Because ESPN makes a lot of like Hall of Fame induction announcements before like even Raw hits. I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, it's cool in a way because somebody else is talking about it, but at the same time, I want to be surprised. I want to know when like that second, third commercial break and Raw yeah. hits. And they're like inducting, and I, that's what I really yeah. want to know how they used to do it. Yeah, I don't, I, that's what I want to find out from you. You don't find out who's going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame by, you know, Johnny yeah. Q in the morning. Yeah, no, and and I'm kind of the same way. Like I miss like you know back in like 2003 or 2004, whichever one it was, uh, when Hulk Hogan got inducted. Right, probably one of the biggest inductions in the history of the Hall of Fame. You found out through WWE. Right. Like, I don't recall like there being like a quick announcement through Sports Center, ESPN, or Fox News or whatever saying, "Oh, Koga's going into all like you heard about it when they put that video package together. I think it's the digital age now to yeah. where they know they can't hide stuff, so they have to get it out there and before anybody else gets to it. Mm-hmm. And why not give it to ESPN? ESPN has been uh, working well with them. Jonathan Coachman worked for ESPN. I believe he's coming back to the WWE. Actually, he actually uh, came back Monday. Did he come back Monday? I, he came back Monday. I have not been able to. Yeah, watch. It, it. Um, I I think the, I think the big thing like when I heard the announcement, and everything, I thought like, okay, pretty cool. Like you know, he's coming back to WWE. He may have unfortunately. I think he was one of the one of the many people that got let go from uh, ESPN because they had a lot of massive layoffs. Oh. Sports Center, ESPN, I can't remember. I, is, is it the same fucking thing? It's, I think it's the same thing. I so, know. I know they had, they had massive layoffs. I think, unfortunately, he fell into that. He fell into that group of people that got let go. But I think, in a way, it kind of works out in the, uh, the East favor because, you know, in 2020, they're relaunching XFL. Right. So, he could be, you know, one of the commentators for XFL. He's had the years, you know, with the sports and everything. Especially being the Dutty, so I think it's kind of a win-win thing. I think he's going to be around. He's uh, he's on the Raw commentating, you know, taking over for Booker T. Oh, so so now Booker T's going back to going to uh, pay-per-view pre-show uh, panels and everything. So now I got Corey Graves, uh, Michael Cole, and uh, the coach who's going to commentate Raw now. I always liked the coach. He was always a. I mean, he is a goofy son of a bitch at times, but yeah. it was always entertaining with the coach. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I loved how the banter that him and the Rock used to have, like when he was a <laughs> when he was a backstage um, interviewee interviewer. Uh, I also loved like when he you know, kind of turned heel and went from being Jonathan Coachman to the coach. Mm-hmm. You know, wearing uh, the backwards beret, hanging out with uh, 
Physic Man, especially during the DX uh, right. feud. <laughs> Didn't he get shit dropped on him too? He did. I think my favorite one is when uh, DX threw him through a wall. <laughs> I don't remember that. I think that was my favorite one. If you ever get a chance, <laughs> I, I go back and check it out. It's amazing. I um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Coachman came back. The Dudley is going to the Hall of Fame. Uh, the second team to get announced, which pretty much means uh, we're we're kind of losing, you know, a lot of uh, um, opportunities to predict these Hall of Fame. <laughs> well. So we need to. I think we'll maybe we'll do that next week. Because there are a lot of people who we would love to see in the Hall of Fame. A lot of them who we think could go in this year. Uh, but, you know, obviously we don't make the decisions because the idea hasn't caught us yet. Uh, so. 815. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe we'll do that next week. You know, we can talk about a lot about the Hall of Fame and everything. Uh, there's not a lot of interviews coming up until uh, the Elimination Chamber, I think, in like three weeks or something like that. First female Elimination Chamber. Team First female Elimination Chamber. Yeah, Alexa Bliss is going to defend her title. In the elimination chamber, which pretty much means, um, well, we'll, we'll get to that. I don't right, want. Right, right, yeah, right, we'll right. get to that. Um, but um, two hundred five live got their new uh, GM. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Drake Maverick. Yeah, it, I, I want AKA Rockstar Spud. Yeah, I, TNA owns that name. I'm, 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 I'm assuming that's sure why he came back, came with the dumb name over yeah. there. I don't understand that like one bit. I never really cared for the Rockstar Spud name either. I love the Rockstar Spud name. Really? I mean, it was a gimmick. It was definitely a gimmick name. Right. But, I mean, like, it, it suited him because, I mean, he was just, like, this small little runt kind of guy. You know? I mean, to call him Drake Maverick, just it just sounds... You just gave the fucking dude two first names. It kind of sounds like a porno name. Sounds like a bullshit name. <laughs> it, so, it sounds like a <laughs> fake name. <laughs> Yes, my name is Drake Maverick. Yeah. <laughs> sure it is, guy. Yeah. Sure it yeah. is. But what, what baffles me is, like, of, of anyone that could have been it, you know, why him? I mean, he, he is pretty charismatic, though. Yeah, and I know that when it comes to GMs, you know, they're fucking gimmicks, you know, they're storylines. They don't really have any pull on 205 Live. But of anyone they could have done, and the one that I thought would have been, which we'll talk about when we get to the Royal Rumble... Would have been the perfect fucking GM for 205 Live because he he was and currently still is the longest reigning cruiserweight champion. Or he he held the title longer than anyone else. So longest right. reign. Longest reign. Right. So uh but we'll talk more about that when we get into the um the Royal Rumble match itself. Uh but what was the other thing that came out that we were talking about? Well, EC three got signed? Ladies and gentlemen. E C three. Yeah. That, so, that's probably my my favorite at the moment. I mean, I'm a huge EC3 fan. I've followed him since. I d- didn't know he was in NXT. Mm-hmm. But when he came to TNA, he came in as uh, Carter's nephew. Yeah. Ethan Carter the third. Ethan Carter the third. They don't even, so, I, like I said, I didn't watch a lot of his end run in uh, TNA. Did he really just go by EC3 like for the rest of it, or was he known as Ethan, Ethan Carter the Third? At, at first, it was kind of like that Hunter Hearst Hemsley thing. Yeah. So for a while, it was Ethan Carter the Third, and then it transferred over to EC3. Yeah, like, um, at first, he started off, um, he had a pretty long undefeated streak, but he also had, uh, I believe, oh, Tyrus was his yeah. bodyguard. Oh, the Funkasaurus? Yeah, the Funkasaurus. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, they used to chant at him, he can't wrestle, he can't wrestle. Uh, and then when he actually started wrestling, he could wrestle. Yeah. And then he developed his mic skills. And, I mean, like I said, he's one of my favorites. He was one of the reasons I actually enjoyed watching Impact Wrestling. And now he's gone. So, I don't know if I have a reason to watch Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, EC3 left. He signed with uh, WWE. Um... Bobby Lashley left. He left last week. Um, rumors ru- are already flying around. Yep, rumors saying he's coming to WWE, but they're still not sure if he's going to stick with MMA or go to WWE. We did mention before we started recording that, you know, what is his ability to do MMA if he comes back to WWE? Right. And could it be full? Could it be a full-time thing? Or could it be, you know, a Lesnar contract where, you know, he wrestles two times a year being champion? <laughs> Let's hope not. Yeah, I know, right? So, Unless he's going to fight Lesnar and take that belt from him. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, we got a uh, limit shaver coming up in like I think I think it's three weeks from now. It could be a month, and I could be wrong. No, it's in February. So it's they're, gonna put, they're gonna put Brock in the elimination chamber? No, no. See, at first I thought it was gonna be the Universal Championship in the chamber, but what it is, it's a number one contendership for the title of WrestleMania. 
That's stupid. I know, right? Anything to keep that strap on Brock, huh? Pretty much. Pretty so, much. Brock and Roman. Is yeah. Roman in the chamber match? Not yet. Well, they're doing the uh, tournaments now. Right okay. now, um, Elias is in it, and uh, Braun Strowman are in it. Ooh. Yeah, because Elias beat, uh, I think it was Woken Matt Hardy. Bray came in and interfered. Uh, so Elias beat Woken Matt Hardy, and uh, uh, Braun beat Kane. Kane. I think Kane's pretty much done now. Yeah, he's getting close to his uh, election time. He has to go back to being Glenn. Well, either way, he's he's scary as fuck. But yeah, even that man coming at you in a suit is not, you know, right. He's gonna he's gonna do really good at uh, um, hall meetings and shit. Right. I mean, he he does a lot of stuff online, and he has a lot of the wrestlers come and do sit downs. Jericho's actually gonna do a podcast from Knox County, I believe it is, is where he's going. Yep. So he's actually doing his Jer. I don't know what he calls the, his podcast. I was going to call Talking it Jericho. Jericho. But I actually started listening to it. Yeah, I subscribed to it. Yeah, because uh, I, yeah, well, I started listening to uh, Edge and Christians, which is a pretty good podcast, and um, Jericho's is good too. I wanted to listen to Austin's, but I, he's only either on Podcast One or iTunes, and it's if it's not on Google Play, I don't really listen to it. But if you go listen to uh, Edge and Christian's podcast of Austin Miss or Talk is Jericho, I mean, they're right up there with ours. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. They're that good. They're that good. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, like, they are easy second and third in the uh, top five of us, Talk is Jericho, ENC, and, you know, like, whoever the fillers are at the bottom. Uh, yeah, I have no idea who the yeah, fillers no. are. Probably uh, Ryback's. And uh, <laughs> right back as a podcast, right back as a podcast. Oh, I listen to that. Meathead. You know, that fucker charges like five grand for an appearance, really? Yeah, right. No wonder he's not in TNA. I know, <laughs> god, I think I don't know where I live. <laughs> <laughs> Just called a dude a fucker, so <laughs> but uh, I think, yeah, I think he has a podcast. Austin has a podcast. Coca Band has a podcast. I heard a lot of people talk about his. Um, listen to a couple of it, but I. I don't know, like, I, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> it's not horrible, I just, I don't, I don't have anything good or bad to say about it, it's just a podcast, but I love Andrew Christian, I love their podcast, and uh, Jericho is fucking Chris Jericho, so, but what's awesome about Jericho is, like, it's not all, like, wrestling related, he had um, Fozzie on there, and um, uh, Rain Wilson, who played Dwight in The Office, he was on there, so oh, he, cool. he does other things, too. Uh, it's actually his latest podcast. I don't know why I'm fucking boosting this fucking podcast, but uh, <laughs> you're boosting the wrong. I know podcast. I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking about way too much. But <laughs> what was one of the cool things is uh, a couple of weeks. It was I think it was a couple weeks ago or last week. His uh, podcast was about the twenty twentieth uh, anniversary of the Montreal Screwjob. Oh, really? And they talked about like everything leading up to it, what happened during it, and stuff following it and everything. So it was pretty cool. Um, whenever you guys are done listening to uh, Just Freaking Wrestling, you can check out Talk is Jericho. It's right. on Google Play. Yeah, I, I, I'd listened to a little bit of him before. Yeah, uh, we listened to him on the on the way to one of the shows before. I yep. actually enjoyed his show. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's dive into because um, we spent the last thirteen minutes talking about nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're gonna uh, let's let's dive into the uh, NXT Takeover, Matt. Uh, we'll talk about the results and everything, and some of the things that happened at the show. Oh yeah. So one of the bigger things that did happen at the show, as we mentioned with EC3 being signed, EC3 was at the show, right. Ricochet was at the show, and War Machine was at the show. Oh, man. So. That's a whole lot of talent in one sentence. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm losing my breath just thinking about it. <laughs> I, I thought that's because I got you up so late. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's like I walked up a couple stairs. <laughs> but no, the only one I was surprised I didn't see, and like maybe I missed it, but I'm not sure if I did or not. Uh, Lorraine, I didn't see there. No, I didn't see her what, either. But um, but the other, the other three big signings that they did in the last, and this is just in like in the last month when they signed these guys, and they're already in the show. Mm-hmm. So that that says a lot of what NXT or WWE or Triple H for that fact thinks yeah. of these people. Yeah, and of course, like I think one of the biggest reasons they like have these like they're signing them now and everything because you know come WrestleMania, everything's gonna get shook up. You know, people are gonna get let go, people are gonna get moved up. You know, people are gonna go switch brands and everything. So I mean, when you you know when you pull these guys out of NXT, you're gonna need to you know replace them. Right. So 
I actually read an article saying that Adam Cole is supposed to be the next face of NXT, which I'm wondering if that's going to, you know, is that going to deter their uh, him advancing after WrestleMania? I don't know. He's going to be the next face? Well, they said he was supposed to be the next face of NXT. So when Drew McIntyre comes back, he's... I think when Drew comes back, he's gonna go back. I think he's gonna go to the main roster. I think so. I think that I think that was maybe the idea when he was facing Cien, unless he was supposed to uh, win that match and they just, you know, called a mulligan. Now what's it called? It's not called a mulligan. What's that called? Audible. Audible. There you go. Audible. Aud- audible. 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 Video. No, video. Audio. That's audio. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think if I think when he gets healed and everything, I think he's gonna pay, I think he's gonna go right to the main roster. Um. Anyways, I'll dive into the uh, results here and everything. So the first match that we had here was the undisputed error taking on the authors of pain. Um, match was almost fifteen minutes. The uh, undisputed error did win, mm-hmm. which it. It's, it was an incredible ma- match all around because one of the biggest things is, I mean, these were smaller guys who took a victory over these mountain of men, you know? But these are also two guys who, if they see a weakness, mm-hmm. they go in right after that weakness and strike and strike and strike and strike, oh, yeah. which caused, uh, I don't remember which one, but I know the guy's knee gave out more than once during the match because of the damage they had done. I think that was... I must say that was um, Akeem, but literally I had a 50-50 shot being right on that one. <laughs> right. I mean, I can't tell. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't. Yeah. Now, you have one, I know one's shorter. I think I think, uh, I, I think it's pronounced uh, Akeem and Rezar. Razor. I think Razor is taller. I'm going to call him Razor now. Fuck it. Rezar. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I don't know. Until you, you meet him. I'm not going to meet him. <laughs> You travesty? Yeah. No, not yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, being managed by this Paul. This guy's travesty. Yeah. Manager Paul Earring, whatever. Um, <laughs> no, Mary in the Hall of Fame. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Was that even words? Uh, four in the morning, bro. Four in the morning. All four right. a.m. Four a.m. Uh, fucking yeah, recording. I'm, I'm used to getting home around this time. I know, so. right? So, no, it was a great match. Um, A lot of it was, I mean,. A, a lot of the offense did go to the undisputed era, regardless of um, what the author of Pains were able to do. I mean, obviously, they you know they went to uh, win for their finisher. I can't remember the name of the time I had, but that's where they went pull, you know, got both guys up for a power bomb, yeah. slammed against each other, slammed down. They were able to hit off half the move, but you know, you know, undisputed era was able to reverse it and it took a win. You right. know, and. You know, I'm happy they did it. You know, like, I would hate to have, like, a title change so much. And that's one of the things you kind of notice in NXT is the title doesn't change hands too often. Not, not since I've been watching it. I have no. noticed that, too. No, I mean, like, I mean, even when you look at the uh, NXT Women's Championship, you know, Paige never lost it. You know, she had to resign it when she moved up. Same thing with Asuka and stuff, you know. So, you know, a lot of guy, girls in between, yeah, they lost it and everything, but, like, it really it did not change that much. And then even the NXT Championship, you know, they, it changes, like, maybe once every three or four months, but it changes because somebody moves up. Right. Uh, so following that, you know, we had the Velveteen Dream versus Cassius Ono, which it was a great match, but this was, like, the bottom match. Like, if you were to rank them, this is, like, five, you know. That, that's saying a lot, though. Yeah, it, I mean, the, the whole match, I mean, every single match in NXT is always great. I've never seen one bad NXT match. Because every guy down there, it, it's, and I, I know I made this comparison a lot, but it's like AAA baseball. Right. Everyone's going to do what they can to make the biggest impact to show that they're ready for the next level. And that's what I love about NXT, because it's very similar to the independence, where it's like, hey, listen, you know, I'm here to make a name for myself, and I'm going to go, you know, Balls to the wall, hundred ten percent. You know, f- you know, pedal to the metal. Whatever you want, fucking you know, whatever analogy you want to use to show that they, you know, they deserve to be, you know, where you know the superstars right. are. So every match is incredible, but if you rank them, you know, it's this was in hindsight not the greatest compared to everything else, but it was still a great match. Um, Velveteen Dream creeps me out. <laughs> he's like the he's like the new age like gold dust. Okay. So okay. 
in in that fact, you know, in that sense, he's he's right. creepy in that sense. Like he he is he is now what Goldust was when he first came around with Razor Ramon, and had right. that kind of feud with him. So very eccentric, uh, very flamboyant. Um, I I don't know if that's like if that's his like real life pers- personality. If it's not, he plays it off very well. That's good. Uh, Cassius Ono, um, just a powerhouse. I mean, like you oh, saw. Yeah. Now, uh, when I was watching, like, kind of, like, the uh, video packages and everything, like, Velveteen Dream, like, guaranteed a knockout victory within, like, 30 seconds or some shit like that. And he got the punch on him. He just didn't knock him out. Celebrated a little too much. <laughs> and kind of Ono came back for a while. So. Well, you got to watch out for that Ono KO. Yeah. God, it was. I, I like him so much, but the thing is, I hear a lot, and I heard it on another podcast. God. I don't know, ringside geeks or some shit like that. I don't think they listen to the show, so it don't fucking matter. Um, they compared uh, Cassius Ono to be a um, the fuck is that word they used? I have no idea. Come on, you know the word. I don't listen to their show. Uh, enhancement talent. Really? Yeah, they said he was pretty much there to kind of like push people forward, and uh, I disagree. I don't think NXT needs enhancement talent uh, superstars. I, I don't think they no they should at that point no especially not Cassius Ono no that dude's good I fucking love that guy yeah uh, wasn't a big fan of the fact that he lost um, but at the same time I know Velveteen's getting a large push so we're gonna see where you know where that leads you know maybe you know after WrestleMania maybe he shows up you know maybe Velveteen Dream ends up on SmackDown because I don't think he's raw talent you know raw seems to be. Not the not the place where NXT guys like get a good push. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. It, see, the thing is, like, I mean, when you look at Raw, to me, when you look at Raw and uh, SmackDown, Raw kind of like tries to aim for like more like aggressive, like superstars. You know, like Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, you know, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns. But then you go to SmackDown. There's more. They're more technical and. More personalities, you know, like Rizango, like Rusev yeah. Day, AJ Styles, you know. So I think it blends that. So like when you can look at that, I mean, it kind of gives you an idea of who's going to end up where when they get moved up. Right. I mean, even when we look at it, you know, okay, if I had to guess, and I'm just going to make a prediction. I'm going to say the author of the pain and Undisputed Era, they're both going to end up on Raw, based on who they are. Velveteen will Velveteen will end up on SmackDown. Cassius Ono will end up on SmackDown. Ember Moon will end up on Raw. Uh, Shayna Baszler, I think, will end up on Raw. Aleister Black will definitely go to Raw. And I think Adam Cole will not be part of the Undisputed Era because I think he would end up on SmackDown. Really? I do. I think they separate him. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Almas, I think, will end up on SmackDown, and Johnny Gargano will never move up. I don't like Johnny Wrestling. Really? I, just, I don't know. There's something about him. Wow. That, that yeah. shocks me. Yeah. No, go and change that. He's going to be in 255. That, that, that's pretty much not moving up. It's not moving up. He's moving to the left. <laughs> He's moving to the left. He's moving to the left. <laughs> uh, but, um, anyways, Ember Moon uh, took on uh, Shayna Baszler. That match, this, uh, brutal. Absolutely yeah. brutal. Mm-hmm. And this, without number four match happening, this probably would have been the most brutal match on the card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, uh, I mean, I love I I knew I knew shit about Shayna before this match. Like I saw a little bit in the uh, May Young tournament and everything, but this match showed how aggressive and how ruthless she can be in a match. Like I'm I'm a fan of hers now. I mean, I'm gonna be paying more attention now. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ember Moon and pretty much just like Shayna said at the end of her uh, her I don't want to say exit interview after match interview. She's like, I didn't lose. Ember survived. Yeah. And that's pretty much what it was. Because it, it wasn't the, what's her finisher that she uses? She didn't hit their finisher and win the match. She mm. pretty much rolled her up. Kind of in the well. Oh, she had, she you're, had, talking, you're talking about Ember Moose finisher. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, I, I know it's like a... It's like a cartwheel, like cut her off the top or something. Yeah, like that. Something like that. I can't remember what's called. It's like an eclipse or something like that. I just really yeah. can't remember the name of it. But yeah, no, she was because she was in the armbar for so long, and then finally, yeah. yeah, she just rolled, uh, 
rolled her up and like you know it's like people called it you know the cheap win or whatever but you win know the win. yeah so exactly fuck yeah and we should get that on a t-shirt we should we should have our first JFW t-shirt like JFW podcast back with wins win to win fuck yeah um but yeah and the thing the the one of the best things that I love about uh, Shayna and her character is even when like Ember Moon, Ember Moon won got the title was walking up the um entranceway again she attacked her and put her in a uh, choke until she passed out again. <laughs> so <laughs> like you're gonna remember me. Yeah, see that's the thing, and that and that's and that's exactly what you know I thought when she did that. Right. Is yeah, you lost this match, but you are showing that you're not gonna become irrelevant. No. That not you're at all. not you're not gonna go to the back of the line and start over again. You're gonna keep yourself, you know, involved in the uh, show somehow. I find it a little crazy that these women from the MMA world. Mm-hmm. Are coming over to the wrestling world. Yeah. And I mean, they're good. Yeah. And brutal as fuck. Yeah. But it's, I, I think, yeah, I think this is going to be like, you know, like how they call they don't call it a diva's revolution anymore. They call it a diva's evolution. And that's where these women are constantly evolving. Even with the next group coming in, they're mm. always getting better. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you, you talked a lot about it, so why don't you uh, mention the uh, next uh, match here. So the next match, we had Aleister Black versus Adam Cole. Aleister Black taking the win, which was, I think, shocking in a way to both of us. Shocked the system. Shocked the system. But this if this if this match wasn't there, the Ember Moon match would have been the most brutal. But this match, mm-hmm. you're talking uh, chairs, tables, ladders. Uh, holy, I mean, he threw the chair up at him one time and kicked him. He's on the top rope. It it blew my mind. Yeah, it, it it was probably the match I was most looking forward to because of Black and Cole, who I was told before I actually started seeing him was kind of a lackluster wrestler. But after uh-huh. what I've seen on NXT, I don't believe that at all. I believe he's coming into his own, if not into his own. Well, you gotta keep in mind he's uh, Adam Cole, baby. Adam Cole, baby. <laughs> One of my favorite, my favorite fucking moments of this is, like, right at the very beginning. You know, when, when Alistair does this whole, you know, he's just sitting there. Yeah. I loved when M. Cole came in with the candlestick and Alistair literally just sat there as he stood there with the candlestick. And I loved when he actually had the candlestick for the first time. He just threw it away like he didn't need it. You know, I <laughs> loved it. Uh, one of the things I did notice, though, that um, is kind of interesting to, like, think about because, you know, obviously he had that um, the undefeated streak going. And right. Eventually he did lose in that Fatal 4 because of Adam Cole. But every time he won a match with his uh, black mask. Yeah, that brutal ass kick. Um, he pinned him and then he sat up, you know, an Indian style and just sat there. At the end of this match, he didn't sit up. He, he pinned him and just kind of rolled over. Which, I mean, it's valid why it happened because of the, how right. recent was. But it kind of shows how even though Adam Cole didn't win... Adam Cole, like, took, you know, Alistair to the limit in that oh, match. In the same aspect, though, the Undisputed Era came out, interfered with the match, and I think, what, Sanity came out? Or who was Sanity, it? yeah, Sanity. Sanity yeah, came Sanity. out to help out. Yeah. Or maybe not to help out, but to get some just desserts on the Undisputed Era. Mm, so it's not like dessert. Adam Cole did it all himself. But definitely, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, desserts. Desserts are... Definitely delicious. I miss pie. <laughs> miss pie? Yeah. 26 Ch- pounds down, bro. Nice. You look good. Uh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I do miss pie. Yeah. Yeah. Let's sit here to drink this Pepsi. Uh, you enjoy your Pepsi. I, I got I got my water. Mm-hmm. Um, no, nah, it was a great match. It was awesome that they had the extreme rules stipulation on it, especially being in Philadelphia, you know, the home of ECW. Um, it, was inc- it was an incredible match. I... I became, I'm, I don't know, like, I, I didn't know much about M. Cole, but now after seeing it, like, I mean, this this takeover kind of motivates me to learn more about, like, you know, these guys before oh, yeah. they even get to the main roster, which every guy on this uh, card, every guy and girl uh, on this card has the ability to uh, be in, um, you know, WWE someday, uh, except for Gargano. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, but yeah, speaking of which, uh, Johnny Gargano and um, Andre Almas, Andre Cien Almas for the uh, NXT Championship. 
32 minutes that this match went. And so, like we mentioned before we started recording, this is the second time, or the the first time since John Cena vs. CM Punk that Dave Metzler has given them mm-hmm. a five, WWE a five-star rating on a match. Yeah. And this match, I mean, this match was a five-star match. It was definitely a five-star it, match. It was. It was. I, I give Johnny Gargano a lot of shit in the last ten minutes, but, you know... <laughs> Eventually, everybody's gonna think you're crazy, like Mental Mary and her need for uh, styles. Oh, yeah, well, you know, she go pound sand. <laughs> fucking loving John Cena, loving fucking Patriots and shit. <laughs> I, I mean, and after the match, I mean, the CN did win. Yep, he he, did, he, he retained the title. Um, my favorite part of the uh, match was when, uh, the very end, when Gargano got up to the stage, waved to his fans, and he ended up on his face. Uh, Siampa came up and hit him in the back. (laughs) Fuck yeah, he did. That dude looked mean as fuck, man. God, he is mean as fuck. (laughs) I couldn't believe it. I I figured he would have came back during the match and cost, uh, Johnny Wrestling the match. Well, he didn't have to cost Johnny Wrestling the match because Johnny Wrestling lost on his own. That's very true. That's true. It's very true. That's why he's ended up in 205 Live. Take Enzo's spot. Who? That's right. <laughs> you mean Eric Ant? Eric Ant. <laughs> how do you feel knowing you're never going to hear a realist guy in the room how you doing on WWE anymore? I, I think I'll survive. Right. Until Big Cass comes back and steals it. Right. Thank God he got rid of that rapist. Holy shit. <laughs> Alleged, alleged. That's true. That's true. I have, I have no proof. That, alleged. Uh, yeah. So. Don't, uh, have don't you get a suit. We ain't got money. Sued by who? There's no Enzo Amore anymore. That's true. The fuck? Who's gonna sue me? What? Dirty? He's gonna come at me? Nah. Yeah, I can. I can do worse. I can do worse. Oh, we can do much remember, worse. Remember Benoit? Oh no. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 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 oh god. Oh, uh, okay, let's 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 let's, let's fucking uh turn out this <laughs> this fucking skid here. Um, this is what happens when we record late at night. That's true. That's true. No, we don't know what's going on with and I mean I don't know what's going on with Enzo's uh thing lately. I know he came out uh him as lawyer came out and he said that he had nothing to do with it, which I'm not saying the woman's wrong. I I've heard from other people, other people on you know social media and stuff like that. So again, internet's not always one hundred percent true, right. but a lot of people said that this woman has said this stuff before and everything. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't honestly. I don't give a shit either way. It's his personal life. It's his personal business. It sucks that he lost a job and a career over it. Um, if he's guilty of it, then he deserves every bad thing that happens to him. If he's not guilty of it, then you know it, it sucks that it happened to him. But at the same time, he put himself in that situation, right? So, I, I think if I was that famous, I would always have somebody with me. I'd always have a waiver. Sober. <laughs> like, look, your whole job while you're yeah. around me is you have to stay sober while I get fucked up. That's exactly right. you have to stay sober. Yeah. It's like, your job is to watch and have him sign the waiver. Yeah. Like, this is a consensual intercourse waiver. <laughs> you sign it, and I'm going to take a video of you signing it. <laughs> so. Then I'm going to take a video of everything else, too. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So yeah, so um, so Thomas did win. When we look at our predictions, as we look up on the board here, um, I took four out of the five. You took one. So good job. Yeah. Hey, the the one I picked is pretty decent though. The one the one you picked is is the it was I'm gonna say that was the best match out of the card, even though you know. The five star rated one. Yeah, three. but to me personally, that was the best match. I think it's hard to give a uh, uh, a no rules match or extreme rules match a five star rating because they can pretty much do whatever the fuck they want to do. I get what you mean by that. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, how do you give you know like a hardcore match you know a high rating? I know the five star thing comes out of like how technical the match right. was. So. Um, but yeah, no, awesome job by everyone from NXT uh, Takeover. They did a tremendous job. Um, How about CN just taking that title and running with it though? Oh yeah. I mean, he's he put that title on him. He's he's become the champion and not just a paper champion. 
Exactly. He's when I, when he first won it, I I saw it as a um, Jinder Mahal move, but it's definitely not. No, Jinder it's Mahal definitely move. not Jinder it's, Mahal uh, move. No, so um, he's definitely. Gonna, I think he's going to get brought up after WrestleMania. I think Gargano's going to get brought up after WrestleMania. I'm hoping Alistair Black comes up, but the problem is, like, when it comes to Alistair Black, like, who do you feud with Alistair Black? Bray Wyatt. Anybody. I don't think you can feud him with just anybody. AJ Styles. I would love to see uh, oh, Black man. take on Nakamura. I think I mentioned that a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, I think he did. That'd be a great match. But I think I think Black would do great with like a maybe even a Woken Matt Hardy kind of feud, uh, Bray Wyatt kind of thing. Maybe for like his first feud, like his introduction feud. Matt, Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy's an enhancement talent. Regardless if you have Broken Matt Hardy or not, he's an enhancement talent. Yeah, he is now. Oh, yeah. I mean, before, in TNA, he wasn't. In no, TNA, TNA he, he was wasn't. The guy, he but. was the guy in TNA. And he was the guy. I, I believe he was one of the guys back in the old WWE years where he was uh, U.S. champion for a while. He was good. You know, the only reason he got popular is because Edge fucked his girlfriend, right? I mean, yeah. you know that, right? Hey. You get popular however you get popular. Yeah, you know you know who was back in the old WWE days? It was Jeff Hardy and his brother. So, <laughs> just so you know. He also lit his brother on fire a couple times. Yeah, you know uh, you know, you know who Matt Hardy is? The guy who came out of uh, his brother's shadow and Edge fucked his girlfriend. <laughs> on live TV? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope to God. That these fucking guys listen to this podcast. And but you know, I thought about coming on your show. But Yeah, then you made those comments about yeah, next wife. Then you then you bring girlfriend. up then you bring up my past and I don't like it. Oh, God. Yeah. So you get from yeah. past. What's he, what's he gonna do? Delete me? Right. <laughs> Delete. I know, right? Not so marvelous anymore, <laughs> is it? Ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Oh, man. Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. The best pay-per-view of the year, second to hopefully a WrestleMania that's not a dumpster fire. Hopefully. Hopefully. And without, like, a, you know, football field-long entrance way. Oh, my God. That's horrible. God, they need to shorten those up. It's weird. You know, you look at Madison Square Garden, it's, like, 15 feet from entrance to fucking ring. I mean, I mean, the older the older WrestleManias, they had them come out on the carts and stuff. But it just seems like it's too much. It's too big. I don't want to see them walking down the the right. ramp for like fifteen minutes. Yeah, bigger is not always better. No, no, that's a quote I got to live by. <laughs> so, <Jeez. laughs> uh, you lose more weight, it'll get bigger. Dare to dream, right? Hey. Right, it's gotta yeah. go somewhere. Shave it, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the Royal Rumble, uh, decent match card. Um, couple of the matches I'm I could have done without, and it's not because like you know the wrestlers involved in it. It was just like how the matches played out. Right. Uh, when you look at the pre-show, there were three pre-show matches. Uh, the first one was the. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it the two hundred five live match because that's exactly what it was. And I believe this was probably the match that kind of took the place of the cruiserweight match that didn't happen. <laughs> that's was supposed to happen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess somebody got injured or something like that. So got uh, her accused of rape. Yeah. Well, I mean, they definitely raped without the opportunity to see a cruiserweight title match. That was true. Um, it's okay. That their that shows are relevant anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you got Kalisto, Grand Metalik, and Lince Dorado, who uh, took a victory over TJP, Gentleman Jack Gallagher, and Drew Gulak. We I like, lo- we like Drew Gulak. I love Drew yeah. Gulak, yeah. And uh, I know we mentioned that last week when we did the uh, predictions on it. Um, but all in all, it was a good match. I mean, you had you had the Lucha mixed with the Cruiserweight and everything, which I know a lot of people are saying, like, well, Travis D. Crucial way to lucha are the same thing. I'm assuming it, no one's it's the same that. thing. No, yeah, it's, it's fucking it's not. not the same thing. You know, but um, it was, I mean, it was it was great overall. I mean, obviously TJP and Jack Gallagher and Drew like they, they weren't always on the same page the entire match. That's probably where the downfall was. Uh, TJP, I think, was taking a nap at some point on the ground. <laughs> um, but um, you know, 
Kalisto, Metalik, uh, Dorado, I mean, they pretty much, they, they work together as a team, as all baby faces usually do, to take a victory. And, I mean, like, it, I mean, Grant, I'm not a huge Kuzway fan. I know you are. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I, it kept my attention. You, you would think that I would watch uh, 205 Live more because I like the cruiserweights. I know, it, right? just, it just doesn't. I have to, something about it. It's not. You know, back in the day when I was watching, like, Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero going at it in WCW, that, it, it, I don't know. It's just not as exciting anymore. Yeah. Or I watch uh, Lucha Underground or watch New Japan Pro Wrestling. And those guys just. I don't know. Maybe it's because WWE holds back their guys a little bit, and they don't want them just go all out. That's what I'm concerned with Ricochet about. Yeah. Like if I if I, I hope to God Ricochet comes in WWE like Prince Puma did in Lucha, just a beast. I doubt they're gonna let him do that finisher though. That 780, I think they called it was called. Was it the? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was just like a spinning fucking swanton bone. <laughs> Yeah, Fuck. <laughs> he just, yeah. He just did what Jeff Hardy does, but better. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's he's got like thirty years. That's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, the revival uh, to gone. Um, I'll call him the Balor Club. Whatever. Still not a fan of it, but uh, the revival one. I love the revival. I, I heard Vince isn't happy with them, and they might be on their way out. Oh. Uh, because they call themselves professional wrestlers. They are. They are professional wrestlers. They are professional wrestlers. I, th- I think that they need to get away from the entertainers. But and- see, that, and that's the fucking problem, and that's what I hate. When you looked at Vince McMahon, when he had his interview with fucking uh, Stone Cold and Stone Cold Podcast on the Dating Network, which it's still there, you can still watch it for just nine ninety nine a month, that he... Nine ninety nine, nine ninety nine, network. He said that his biggest problem he has with the wrestlers today is no one's willing to grab that bat, uh, brass ring, and then when people fucking do, he bitches at him. Right. It's like I don't give, who gives a fuck if they call themselves fucking professional oh, wrestlers. Good. You know, Braun Strowman said he was going after the strap. He got in trouble for calling it a strap. But just let them be. Uh, yeah. If, don't let them cuss. If you don't want them to cuss, tell them not to cuss. Yeah. Just let them say whatever the hell yeah. they want to say other than that. Yeah. I mean, if you sit there and think that, like, you know, somebody calling a title a strap is going to fucking degrade the value of it, keep in mind, you have a title called the Universal Fucking Title. Right. Okay, no one from fucking Mars is coming to fucking fight Brock Lesnar for this fucking title. You're calling it the fucking Universal Title. The dumbest name of a fucking title next to a butterfly-shaped title for a divas. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's so fucking dumb. They should just do what they fucking did before. Have a heavyweight title, have an undisputed title. Or, you know, a heavyweight title and a WWE title. Separate it again. You don't, I mean, who, why the fuck? I mean, I, what, because of the WWE Universe, you have right. to be a champion of the fucking WWE Universe? Brock ain't my champion. Hashtag not my champ. Hashtag not my champ. Not my fucking champ. But no, let, I mean, like, fucking let these guys, I mean, like, they're, they're I mean, they're fucking young guys who... Or trying to make a name by themselves by being impactful. And yeah, they want to say they're not sports entertainers because I don't want to have a sports entertainer. These guys know what they're getting into when they get into the business. Yep. It's you, you and me both have watched it for mm. over decades. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So it's, it's not like they don't know what they're getting into. They mm. know all, the, I mean, they know all the ins and outs. They they know the, the travesties like yeah, draws. Travesty. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, like what happened to draws. Yep. That that was terrible. Yep, Owen Hart. Owen Hart. Yep. But they're still coming to do this stuff. Mm-hmm. And even if you talk to Draz today, he doesn't look back on his career as a mistake or anything like that. He holds no hard feelings or anything like that in the interviews that I've seen. Well, he can't hold anything. <laughs> He's actually getting better. But, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> But, I mean, they know what they're getting into. Yeah. Just let them do what they need to do. You know, if they get to the point where your doctors don't clear them, stop. Yep. You stop them at that point, just like you did with Dana Bryant, just like you did with Edge. Corey Graves. Corey Graves. Yeah. Man. Paige. Paige. Yeah. 26 years old. And now you're done. Yeah. Yeah. 26 years old and has to retire. Forced to retire by the WWE. 
You know, it's like, I mean, like you, you guys, you guys want these people to grab their brass, you know, to grab the brass ring, break through the glass ceiling, and shit. But when you shackle fucking people to the fucking ground, they can't fucking rise. You know, Not they can't, they can't climb the ladder when you're fucking kicking the rungs out from their feet. And that's what a fucking joke is. Like, who cares if they call themselves sports entertainers? Right. You know, like fucking like, if fucking Kalisto went out there and they just said like. I'm I'm not a luchador. I'm I'm an American. You got fucking bitch him because now he just bastardized the whole concept of right. being a luchador. Or fucking Daniel Bryan went out there and said like, I I'm not really married to Nikki Bella. You know, it's like I mean like they're, you know they're not true, but I mean, I, mean, right. I know they're married. You know, but it's just like Brie. what I say, Nikki. God, she's hot. I heard rumor that him, uh, her, and Edge, uh, her and Cena might be uh, breaking might, up. Might be breaking up. Oh, I know, right? Right? Yeah. right? It's all because of the Patriots. You can tell uh, Mental Mary that one. I'm not going to tell her. See, see what happens when John Cena gives yeah. up and asks her to marry him? Yeah, I, it's just, I think it's all just speculation to raise uh, uh, views for uh, Total Bellas. But anyways, um, yeah, no, it, I, I, I like the revival. I'm glad they call themselves fucking uh, superstars. You know, I'd rather have pro wrestlers than right. fucking uh, sports entertainers. Because pro wrestling is if, entertainment. If you get a sports entertainer, you get Enzo Amore. Yeah. Who is, should have been nowhere near in a yeah. ring or let alone a champion. Mm-hmm. He, an enhancement? He's not even... He should have just been a job. Jobber. Oh, yeah. He, he, sh- he should have been a jobber. He should never last on NXT. No. No. Uh, Bobby Roode had his open challenge. Um the guy to answer the challenge was uh, Mojo Raleigh. I, I didn't get to see the pre matches, so. Okay, so uh, Bobby Roode faced Mojo Raleigh. Yeah. That was about it. He won. It. If you wanted to see what their match was like, go back and watch uh, the qualifying match on SmackDown. It was the same fucking thing. Pretty much. Yeah. They they better not stale up Bobby Roode. No, I gotta hope not. I hope not. I. I, I want Bobby to keep moving forward. Right. I mean, he has to keep moving fucking forward. It's Bobby fucking root. Glorious. Glorious. Yep. He won't give in. No, he won't give in. Until he's, he's victorious. victorious. That's right. Um, this one kind of bad for me. And we talked about this, like how the structure and uh, lineup for the matches were kind of weird and right. offsetting. Because you had the WWE Championship match to be the opening match of the uh, official show. Right. After the pre-matches. Where you had AJ Styles taking on uh, Owens and Sami Zayn. And, I mean, it was a decent match. Yeah. AJ Styles did prevail, which I did not predict, but... It, did the ending uh, to you seem a little weird? I'm trying to remember it now. I don't remember. Oh, okay. I don't, I'm don't. i sorry. <laughs> Dude, oh, it, there it, you. It was, no. it was like a week ago. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So I, was, I was getting over a hangover last week, so... That's true. <laughs> yeah. Um... God, I, now you know. See, I can't remember it either. I'll see what you did. But I know there was something weird about it. That something just doesn't seem right about it. Oh, something happened. Oh, like, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. AJ pinned the wrong guy. Yeah, AJ pinned the wrong guy. AJ pinned Kevin Owens. Right. That's what was fucking weird about it. Yeah, because uh, Sam went for the tag, but didn't make the tag. But Kevin right. Owens came in anyways. And I love the uh, after match thing in the background where Kevin was telling Shane he didn't make it right. And Shane's like, oh, you're wondering if I saw what happened? They're like, yeah. He's like, yep. And then fucking walked away. Loved it. I also love the fact that I think at the... It's either, ne- it's either next SmackDown or the next SmackDown pay-per-view. I can't remember which one it is. That Sammy and Kevin are going to face each other for a number of contendership against AJ Styles. Really? Yeah. That's, see? I mean... Yeah. I kind of kind of predicted something like that. Yeah, You know they're going to do something to like pin each other or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Poke each other Do- in the chest. Double and fall poke down. of doom. The Do- double poke of doom. Double poke of doom. Um, but yeah, AJ ended up did winning. Um, yeah. Well, I guess we could do that while we go through. So Cle- the Kalisto uh, versus TJP. Uh, let's see where we at. Where the fuck is it? Oh, there it is. You picked Kalisto. I picked uh, TJP. You got that one right. We both picked Revival. Which we both got that one right, and then you picked Rude, and I picked the smell uh, mystery punk, and I thought maybe it was gonna be like you know EC three right. or something like that. Um, so you did get that one right. Uh, AJ versus uh, Cammy. 
I, I got that one wrong. You got that one wrong. I picked Styles. And then uh, following that was uh, the Usos versus Chad Gable, Sean Benjamin. Again, for me, the only thing I didn't like about this match was the ending. The, the quickness of it. Yeah, I mean, like the, I mean, the match went for 13 minutes and 55 seconds. So about 14 minutes this match went. For the first 12 minutes, there was no pinfall or nothing. And all of a sudden, you get a pinfall. And then you get Chad Gable's like, I'm not going to lose. And then he just fucking loses like 45 right. seconds later. I, I mean, I, why Gable and Benjamin didn't win this match is beyond me because I would have thought that would have been a great time to push them. Yeah. And still have the Usos look halfway decent. But at the same, I mean, what, what are you doing with these two? Because honestly, I don't want to see Shelton Benjamin in a tag team anymore. I want Shelton Benjamin on his own. Do you think he kind of regrets coming to WWE now? I don't think so. No. He's He's getting paid. I don't know. If, I don't know what kind of money he was making in the independent scene, but I'm yeah. sure it's consistent money now. Yeah, it's not Cody Rhodes' money. No, no, no. No, Cody Rhodes is banking. Yeah. Um, one of the things I did like uh, with Chad Gable and everything is the promo they had um, behind the scenes with Jason Jordan. I didn't see that. Yeah. So. Seth and Jordan were talking about getting ready for the match, and then Gable and Sean Benjamin walk in, and then Seth walked away so they could catch up. And Gable was talking about how, like, you know, he was introduced him to Sean Benjamin. He's like, you know, this is the guy that, you know, left me to go to Raw to, you know, have his own, like, solo career, and then tapped his title and asked him, you know, how his solo career was going, all that stuff and everything. And uh, it just ended with Jordan looking at Gable saying, like, where's your title? And then walked out. So it was a it was a pretty cool interaction. It was a lot of tension there, and obviously it's kind of weird when you see like your old partner sees right. your new partner and everything. Well, see, we had um, always figured that those two were going to come to blows at some point in time too. I right? hope they do. I mean, they're both young guys. They're both good talents. I mean, yeah, Jordan is a bitch, but I think that they have abilities to have like a, a good technical style match. Right. Now, as long and I pray to God it doesn't happen because I say this, um, I hope they don't do like a brawl for all, but it's like actually like amateur wrestling. <laughs> right right god <laughs> oh god if it happens you can blame me but if it happens i want fucking credit and i want fucking royalties off that shit. royalties um but yeah so the usos did take the win uh they took a 2-0 you know they did gable guaranteed that there wasn't going to be a third fall and he was correct yeah there, was no third <laughs> there fall. sure as hell wasn't um i picked but uh benjamin and gable and you picked the usos yep. so you got that one right uh, following that was the 30 man uh, Royal Rumble. Uh, we can actually scroll down real quick and we kind of see the entrance and everything. It started out with Rusev and Finn Balor. Which was, I mean, they were in for a while. Oh, uh, fuck yeah. And I I don't know how Rusev Day is getting over so much. I don't but know, but I, is, I'm enjoying that it is, though. Yeah. I think uh, the Russell crate that I uh, bought, um, I think the month before they had a Rusev Day shirt in it. I think I think Rusev is always like I've I've always liked Rusev. Yeah, and I figured I, I, he just never got the proper push for me. I think because he got injured the one time that kind of put him back. So I'm hoping yeah. that this puts him on the map. Yeah, I also do. I mean, like I I think that he needs to go for maybe he may be ready for like tag team titles. Um, but I think it's gonna take a little bit to kind of like build back up to like mid card and everything because like right now. Even though his gimmick is getting over, it's kind of a goofy gimmick. It's not right. like U.S. title, 30 title gimmick. It's I can see it definitely being a tag team. Right. But at the same time, I can see Fandango being a tag team, and they're not fucking there yet either, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, Rusa, Rusa started off and Balor came out. Uh, Rusa lasted about 30 minutes uh, before he got eliminated. Uh, one of my favorite things, oh, gosh, who was it? Baron Corbin. After Baron Corbin was in, he got eliminated after a, a minute six seconds. He um, he just attacked everybody. Yeah, that that shit was hilarious. He he and he attacked everyone outside the ring. Like it was the ring was empty, and what it was and the next thing I loved was when Heath Slater entered. Like he got attacked by Baron Corbin when, when uh, he was coming down. Elias attacked Heath Slater after that. Andrade uh, Almas, who made um uh, appearance at the NXT or at the uh, Royal Rumble. He attacked Heath Slater as he was coming in. Bray Wyatt attacked Heath Slater <laughs> when he was coming in. And then Big E helped him into the ring just uh, to be eliminated, like, right after. <laughs> By Bray Wyatt. Yeah. 
Uh, Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn uh, he entered, but he actually took. Um, they oh Ty Dillinger. They took Ty, out Ty Dillinger. He took out Ty Dillinger. Yeah. So they took uh, ten. Yeah. Which he came out number eleven. So I mean, I guess they didn't want to do the ten for ten again. But yeah, um, actually, there's an asterisk here. What's the little asterisk? Yeah, he Slater spent the name of the time outside the ring before officially <laughs> entering the Rumble due to being attacked by Baron Corbin. Yep. Uh, see it today, but okay. Anyway, so, um, Sheamus lasted twenty seconds. He uh, he was he Slater's uh, only um, elimination. He was literally in there. Now, see the other thing. They asterisked that 20 seconds uh, down here. Although, though, he recognized that it's 20 seconds, the actual time is disputed. I mean, it, it seemed like a lot less than 20 seconds because I almost thought that they beat uh, Santino Morella getting eliminated in like oh, three seconds. I didn't think seconds. it was that quick. Yeah, I thought it was pretty quick. So, two got eliminated in like a second. <laughs> yeah, McCain. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so James came in last about 20 seconds in there. Uh, David Woods came out. Apollo Cruz came out. Uh, Nakamura came out number 14. Then you got uh, Cesaro, uh, Kofi Kingston. Kofi Kingston, uh, oh, what was his uh, little trick he did this year? Oh, he landed on the pancakes. He landed on the pancakes. Yeah, he, he had one foot on the pancakes. Yeah, so he landed on pancakes. Not his best work. No. Not his best work, no. no. Uh, finally, that Jinder Mahal came out. Jinder lasted about three minutes. No big deal. Rollins came out. Hardy showed up. John Cena made his uh, appearance. Um, following uh, John Cena was the Hurricane. There's a hurricane of Bruin. Yeah, which is who you thought would run. That's the guy I thought would be right, the GM. I thought Live. I thought that was a brief introduction to. See, I didn't see the Hurricane being GM. I saw Shane, Shane Helms. Helms. So yeah. So I I thought that would have been great. I mean, Shane Helms is has the longest uh, title uh, reign as cruiserweight champion. Right. I thought it'd be perfect. It said they went with uh, Rockstar Dud. And <laughs> that's what you did there. See right there. Okay. Uh, after the hurricane came out, the hurricane only lasted forty five seconds. Got eliminated by John Cena, which everyone booed him because fucking you know Super Cena has to fucking bury everybody. <laughs> He's got that magic <laughs> shovel, you know. Right. <laughs> Uh, Aiden English followed that. Adam Cole, after the gruesome match he went through, made his appearance at the Royal Rumble. Went taped up ribs and all. Mm-hmm. So he was the, the second of two NXT guys to come in. Uh, Randy Orton showed up shortly after that, followed by Titus O'Neil, and he got the Miz. Rey Mysterio made an appearance. So he, I don't know if he's going to come back for some time or if this is just a one-off thing. That I'm not too sure of, and I find out was Roman Reigns, who everyone assumed was going to be, you know, the champion. But with that, I mean, we assumed that he was going to win. <clears throat> Goldust made an appearance, and I think if I remember right, they said that was Goldust's 16th uh, Royal Rumble. Think, yeah, he set. So he's he tied set, for second. Did he? Is he tied for second? I yeah. thought he set the bar. No, Kane. Uh, Kane has like 21 of them. Really? 19 or 21 of them? Yeah. Man. He, uh, I think he tied. Oh sure. fuck! I don't know who it is. How you doing? You okay? Yeah, okay. okay. Um, and then Dolph Ziggler came out at number thirty and lasted two minutes and then got eliminated. That you know what my favorite elimination was? I want to know what's that? Roman Wayne's throwing out Seth Rollins and then Rollins is looking up at Reigns, going like just yeah. smiling yeah. like fucker. Yeah, I think that was my favorite. That was cool. I mean, like I mean, that's what happens when you go into Royal Rumbles, you know? Like it is every man for himself. Right. Now, logically, when you think of it from an outside, like, you know, gimmick perspective, they would work together. Right. But, you know, Roman, I mean, and that's one thing that sucks too. Like, you want to put Roman over, you don't fucking make him look like the bad guy who eliminates his friend, you know? But I, I think that the whole fact that they had a little, like, like the, the bro glance afterwards, yeah. that, that, that made it okay. All right. So, after everything's said and done, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura became the winner. Uh, he's going on to WrestleMania, and he did announce at the Royal Rumble who he's uh, who he chose. A J Styles. Yeah, that's gonna be phenomenal. It's the match that everyone wants to see. Right. It's the match that people want to see. All right. So looking at the thirty man uh, Royal Rumble, what was your favorite part of it? And what was your least favorite part of it? If you had one, least favorite part: doing absolutely nothing with Dolph Ziggler. That's mine too. Yeah. yeah. I, it, 
It didn't make sense to bring him back, and if you're going to bring him back, I'd at least given him the win. Yeah. Because well, I, I don't think he's got a Royal Rumble win. No. I don't think so. No. Not a whole lot of people do. Yeah. Right, so what's your... Uh... What's your uh, favorite, my favorite? time moment? Yeah. I think my favorite is Nakamura winning. But I think he eliminated Cena to win, right? Yeah, yeah, he eliminated yeah. John Cena, yeah. That, that was probably my favorite part. All right, so following the uh, Fondo Rumble, we had uh, the tag team match with uh, Chad Gable, Jason, or Jason Jordan, <laughs> Seth Rollins, right. taking on the Ba. The Ba. The Ba. So, um, oh, yeah, real quick, uh, three minute World Rumble. We both uh, assumed it was going to be Roman Reigns. Uh, we we're both wrong. Thank God. Your uh, dark horse was the Miz, and my dark horse was Elias. And we were wrong on that as well. Right. Um, yeah, so Cesaro and Sheamus uh, defeated Rollins and Jason Jordan in the tag team match, which, like I said, like I missed the part where Jordan was kind of like. And Jordan got attacked, and then it, it just seemed like it took so long for the crybaby to recover. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's a weird thing, too. It's like, you know, Rollins fought the match most, the, most of the time by himself. Finally tagged in Jordan. Jordan walks in, acts woozy, or K-Face yeah. woozy, whatever it is, and then tags Rollins and sits down on the fucking stairs for the right. rest of the fucking match. So, like a spoiled-ass child. Yeah. So, I, I, I didn't see any... Um, uh, backlash on Raw about it, so I don't know if it's going to open a Jordan Rollins feud or some shit like I'm that. I'm sure or... it will. But, um, yeah, I'm glad they're not champions anymore because I don't think Jason Jordan fucking deserved it. So, um, uh, so, uh, triple threat match uh, we got for the Universal Championship. Uh, Kane, Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar. Uh, it's a pretty decent match as far as three p- super powerhouses go. Yeah. I mean, Lesnar did not pin Braun. No. And Lesnar tried doing the same thing that Braun did to him and drop a table, flip the announce table on him, and mm-hmm. the, they got put through tables. And I, I really thought for a minute there that Brock was going to lose. I well, mean, that was hope. I, I thought that the Royal Rumble was going to be the moment where, like, Braun Strowman, like, you know, became champion just so Brock wasn't anymore. Right. You know, but obviously it didn't happen. I mean, you know, they, they tore the place apart. Uh, Brock Lesnar came up with the victory. They had that little issue during the match where uh, Braun, either by accident or attention or wherever it was, kneed uh, Lesnar on the side of the head, pissed Lesnar off, and Lesnar ended up punching Braun in the fucking face. Which really only affected Braun a smidgen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean... That was a pretty brutal punch, and Braun just kind of shook it off. And yeah, well, from the art, from the article I read and everything, like after all that did, Braun literally yelled at him, like sold the fuck down. So I mean, I get you know, Braun Strowman is in a world title match at the Royal Rumble. Yeah, I mean, being a, still a you know pretty you know pretty like freshman year newer right. guy, you know, it's I get why he was nervous and everything, and it happened. But I mean, hey, you know, he kind of got uh, checked and you know, brought back to reality for a little bit. So. <laughs> Uh, but Brock really did win. It it wasn't. It's not much of a uh, match to talk about. It was kind of just there. I mean, we knew what was. I mean, we we knew what was going to happen, but we didn't want it to happen. Yeah, I mean, you got a fucking a mayor, a part timer, and then fucking Braun Strowman. Yeah, the so. the only guy who's working full time schedule. Yeah. Uh, the main event, which I'm glad it was the main event because it deserves to be the main event, right. is the uh, women's Royal Rumble. So many surprises. Um, one of the things that the biggest surprise for me before the match, uh, uh, not even in the match, but like I was sitting there looking, I was watching the match, I was watching everyone coming out there, and I kept thinking like, there's somebody missing. Like there's a there's a div or sorry, there's a woman's wrestler right. missing, and then it clicked in my head like Alicia Fox never made it out there. Right. When I searched and tried to figure out why, it turned out you know she did break her tailbone and everything. So I was kind of curious on who was the actual like. Replacement for her. That's a that's a good question because yeah. I'm I'm not seeing like I don't know. Dana Brooke maybe. Dana, yeah, I could see Dana Brooke being the replacement. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so we okay. So we look at this. Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch started out the match. 
It was a pretty good start. It was a very good start. Uh, Sasha lasted uh, for 54 minutes in there. So, yeah. I mean, that's that was damn near the whole match. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, good for her, you know. Um, the, so, being that this is the first ever women's match and everything, you got to believe that they're going to keep the records like they did for the men, right? Longest uh, in who uh, had the most eliminations and stuff. <laughs> what's what's funny? I think like the who had the most eliminations is actually someone who came back. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, let's work on the uh, line and find them here. So okay, so Sasha and Becky started out obviously followed by Sarah Logan and uh, Manny Rose coming out. Uh, Lita was the first like you know surprise, surprise. entrant, was... Hall of Famer Lita right. coming out, and she did very well. Yeah, yeah. She seemed like does she seemed to have a little bit of ring rust, which is right. not, which is understandable, but still, like, I mean, she did her her uh, moon salt, right? So, uh, uh, I think it's pronounced Carrie Sane from NXT. Uh, she made uh, she made a surprise entrance into right. um, Royal Rumble. Finally, day got Tamina, Dana Brooks, Tori Wilson came back, uh, noted here as a free agent, and who didn't have the greatest of showings. I feel. She had a better showing than the person down here at the bottom, though. Is that the one? Yeah, well, I, I thought think, that was the one. No, I think I think you're thinking about her. Okay, because this was this was a dumpster fire. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, no, Tori, that's Tori Wilson. Tori Wilson actually didn't have like a bad like. For, okay, so for being out for as long as she had with no relation to the WWE for that long, she didn't do that bad. Right. It wasn't as it's not as great as like you know. You know the Hall of Famers, or you know the girls who are always there. But right. I mean, like she, she did pretty well for herself, and she still looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. I, 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 were, I think I would like to like have her have like the old like curls and stuff back, but that's not related to her wrestling capability whatsoever. But <laughs> she did, she, she did a really good job, and like to kind of uh, all the girls that um, came back. There are speculation that some of them are kind of going to be here a little bit. They're not just like one and done. Really? Yeah, so I'm not sure who's who, but we've had so many. And it, it just, and that was a cool thing, too. Like, I'm happy that they didn't have enough uh, current roster women to be in the match because it gave the opportunity to the women who paved the way to right. come back and be part of it. Like Tori Wilson, um, like Molly Holly, uh, who came in, Michelle McCool. Who had Came back. the most eliminations? She had the most. She had the five. She had five eliminations within eight minutes. Um, the the wife of the Undertaker. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so, Mrs. Taker. Yeah. So she she made it in. Um, I mean Sonya Deville, Liv Morgan, Lana, Ruby Riot, they were all in there too. Vicky Guerrero was a waste. I'm assuming Vicky had to been the replacement for Alicia uh, Fox. Now that I think about it. But she was eliminated by Becky Lynch, Michelle McCool, Ruby Riot, and Sasha Banks. <laughs> it took that many people to yeah, throw right. her old ass yeah, out the ring. Hell yeah, that gently put her over the ropes yeah. and shit. Yeah, uh, Kamara, uh, Carmella, and Natalia came in following that. Kelly Kelly showed up. She is the one that didn't do that great. I think, and she, I think she went in and tried to like make an impact too much. It right. kind of just, it just looked like an awkward. Maybe she got fight. a little overwhelmed. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think she. I think she knew her spot that she was gonna do, and kind of just botched a little. But I mean, it's still great to kind of see her. I think there may have been, uh, could have been someone else that could have came in instead of her. I mean, there to me, there feels like there may have been another option that could have been out there. Yeah, probably. Um, Naomi came up following that. Jacqueline came back, and Jacqueline did amazing. Yeah, she. I mean, she looked you know, good. She looked old, but she looked good. Yeah, I mean, she. I mean, she. It was like. She, I mean, she looked like she could still be in the ring doing what she's doing. Right. You know, at a, at an older age, I'm, and I don't know how old she is. I'm not calling her old, but at an older age, I mean, she fight, she fucking kept up. I mean, she only lasted for like two minutes, but I mean, she kept I mean, up with yeah. them two strong minutes. You know. <laughs> uh, Nia Jax came in after that. Who I mean, I think everyone kind of saw her as being like the like. Yeah, she know, was my one. black horse, I believe. Dark horse. Let's not be racist. No. <laughs> Yeah, she was. Uh, Becky was mine. Um, Becky lasted a little bit in there. Yeah, she went out way before mine. Yeah, 30, 30 minutes, uh, 54 seconds. Nia lasted 17 minutes, so uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. so who uh, who eliminated Becky? Who we got here? Oh, Ruby Wright eliminated Becky. Hmm. 
Sad. Anywho. So yeah, so Nia Jax came out. Uh, she eliminated four people, so second most out of the uh, uh, Rumble itself. Ember Moon, NXT, made an appearance Great there. Wrapped arm and all. Fuck yeah. Uh, gosh, she's just... I, mean, I, I really like her. I, I can't wait for her to fucking move up. Right. Beth Phoenix uh, made an appearance. Uh, another Hall of Famer to make an appearance there. Got eliminated by her best friend, Natty, as <laughs> she likes to call her. Um, Beth Phoenix is actually... Um, she kind of like stood uh, toe to toe with uh, uh, Nia Jax. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, Asuka, she uh, came in after Best Fan, followed by Mickey James. Uh, Nikki Bella made her return, followed by Brie Bella. It's kind of weird how they still have Nikki marked as SmackDown. I thought she was kind of free aging now. No, she was on SmackDown before she left. Well, yeah, but I mean, fucking John Cena was on Raw before he left, and well. Yeah. Yeah, so she's go. not John Cena. Uh, Nick Brie Bella followed in after that. Um, Bailey showed up after that, and then Trish Stratus made their the number thirty. Uh, and I mean, Trish looked really good too, though. Trish, oh yeah, Trish. Trish, I'm happy that she dyed her hair kind of close back to what it used right. to be, because like when she came out, it reminded me of old Trish. Not so much uh, her uh, wrestling attire. You know, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. I've, I was right that that wasn't her normal attire. No, right it, no, it definitely wasn't. Like, yeah. Because it was more like lacy, kind of like fishnetty. Right. Which that's not what she wrestled. She wrestled in like, you know, like pants and like some kind of like. Almost a tube top kind of. Not kind, a tube kind top. Kind of like, a, like, kind a, like a, a Nikki Bella right, top. Right, right, yeah. right, right. So that's what she used to wrestle in. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, what she, because when she came out, it was kind of weird. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember, I just, it reminds me of like fishnets and like lace and stuff like that. I thought it looked good. And I'm not saying it looked bad. I'm just saying it looked it looked weird compared to what I remember Trish being. You, you were expecting something different. I, well, I was expecting vintage Trish. Right. I mean, like it's like Lita. I mean, Lita came out into what she normally wrestled in, you know, except for you know her G string not hanging out. Right. But you know, yeah, PG and I guess even on the WWE Network they get. You, for you know who I thought was super impressive on their return was. Do Molly you know Hall. that if you get the WWE Network now, you get two months free compared to the one month they normally get? That's you? great because I've been paying for it ever since the damn thing came around. I know, right? Like we don't get them offers. Molly Holly did amazing. God, she did that uh, somersault. Uh, yeah. God, it was so good. That, I did mention Molly Holly, right? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. I guess I kind of just breezed uh, by her by accident. Um, Everyone did great. Um, Who took the win? Asuka. Asuka did. And Oscar, Nobody was ready for Asuka. Asuka was kind of our, uh, yeah, she's pretty much logical yeah. to win. So, um, it was, it was great. She has not made her announcement on who she's facing yet. I think she's probably going to wait until after whoever wins the Elimination Chamber to make her decision. I wouldn't mind to see her face Charlotte Flair. I think that'd be a great match. Uh, out of this whole thing, what was your favorite part and what was your least favorite part about this uh, Royal Rumble? Uh, favorite part was totally Trish Dance coming back and doing good. Unfavorite was Vicky Guerrero. I, I love the excuse me thing. Yeah. Like the second she got in the ring, I was like, oh, really? I didn't like how often she did it. My least favorite is definitely Vicky Guerrero. Yeah. Um, my my favorite of it all is, um, actually, I don't know. There's, I mean, there's really just so much. It, about it's kind of it. hard to pick with this yeah. one because there were so many surprises and like really good surprises. If I had to pick one, I think I'm going to go, see, I don't know. It's like, I like how Sasha lasted almost an hour. Right. I like how she kind of became that workhorse one in it. I love all the uh, um, Hall of Famers and like past girls that came back, but I don't. Want, I don't want to take. I don't want to take uh, Trish Stratus because you did. So I want to like make some other acknowledgement up here. To, you know, I'm gonna go with Ember Moon, injured and all, and everything. I think she came out. I Maybe mean, whether it's an injured gimmick or whatever, but I mean, like it showed her toughness and her right. willingness. I mean, it's the same thing with Adam Cole. Adam Cole came out, showed a bandaged. Right. So. I'm going to go with Ember Moon. I mean, like, her ability to, like, have a title match and then the next day coming out and being part of, you know, history, I think is absolutely amazing. Uh, another thing about the um, women's uh, Royal Mumble, Stephanie McMahon came out to be a commentator. Right. She didn't do that bad. And I loved how she actually had, like, information on the people. Right. So, um, why, don't we, uh, why don't we wrap this up with uh, your uh, match uh, pick of the week? So normally I go through and I have to like dig around to find my match of the week, but this time I I'd figured with as as well as the NXT takeover did mm-hmm. and how they got the five star rating, I went ahead and did uh, Cien Almas versus Johnny Wrestling, 
because it did get a five star match. The match was ridiculously good. So that's the match of the week. Um, if you've been listening, you already know who won. Yeah. I'm still not going to tell you who won, even though we mentioned it earlier in the week. Yeah. Check it out. It'll post right after the show posts. Awesome. Perfect. And uh, yeah, uh, Dizzle J's Pick of the Week is always posted on Facebook. Uh, as soon as we release the show, that's released following it. Uh, we're also on Twitter and on um, Instagram. So all I got to do is search the DFW podcast. And make sure you stay involved uh, with us and follow us on Instagram because I'm thinking starting either next month or uh, April, depending on when the boxes start coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to do some unboxings of some of the wrestle crates that I got. And uh, we're kind of just going to, you know, like I'm going to post pictures of everything on the Instagram because for me to tell you exactly what it is, but not show you, it's kind of irrelevant. I think, can we do videos on the Instagram too? Yeah, I think they got stories and stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, we could look into it. You know, we could do a cut, you know, we could do a Facebook Live. We could do an Instagram post. We could still post the pictures and everything. And, uh, you know, we'll do all that and everything. Uh, I did sign up for Slam Crate. So, they're coming every other month for at least a year. So, those should be coming in soon. And I'm also going to look into, um, that uh, that wrestling club. I'm going to look into that, and that's a monthly thing. Uh, if you guys are ever interested in looking at a slam crate and thinking about getting them for yourselves, if you go onto our Facebook page and you click the link about the post I made about it, if you click on that, it saves you $5 on your first purchase of the uh, of your first slam crate. So if you think about getting it and want to save a couple bucks to see what the first one's like, give yourself you know, go and give yourself an opportunity to save 5 bucks. I think it would be like t- maybe $26, $27 after you use the five dollar uh, coupon that's offered to you guys um yeah so keep posting for those and everything because i'm really excited to do those unboxings not only to get the um what the fuck are you laughing about <laughs> you're just so tired <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm i'm trying i'm trying to promote you know well, future know. events here I mean, man don't, don't worry about you. how tired i am i, I wasn't laughing out yeah loud. fucking dick he's a dick <laughs> so unboxing's coming up i'm really excited not only to um you know, to, to, to share these uh, this opportunity with you guys on, you know, building my collection, but to also build my fun collection of wrestling and stuff. Uh, you know, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, JFW Podcast. If you guys have any comments or want to bring anything to our attention or recommendation or a question you want to ask us, um, let us know. Email us at jfwpodcast.com because we want to start doing these uh, question and answers from, uh, from our listeners because it kind of helps you guys get more involved in the show. Um. I think that's all I got. Uh, you got anything? I think it's time to ring the bell on this episode. Awesome. As always, I am Travis D. I'm Dizzle J. And thank you for listening to another episode of Just Freaking Wrestling, the JSW Podcast. Peace.